Little pig, little pig. Okay, so I am making like a weird Walking Dead Lucille tribute bat thing, lamp thing with resin and this. I do some resin projects every now and then, but I just figured I'd get some use out of the bat. Why not make another video of it? So I'm doing a tier list and it's going to basically be on stereotypical DVD players. Anywhere from tunneling, the survival rule book kind of thing, witch dreamers, that kind of stuff. So I've created this tier list. I'm gonna go for each one. At the moment, these uh, symbols won't mean anything to anyone. S through to D. S is obviously good. These are middle ground and D is bad. Okay, so first up we've got exploiters and cheaters. They're going straight into D tier. Nobody likes these guys. And when I'm talking about these kind of people, I mean the ones who see an exploit to do with, I don't know, with the lockers and the flashlights and making yourself invincible and still abusing it. And that kind of just... I got flashlights removed for everyone because people are abusing it. So, exploit abusers and cheats of the game. They're the worst. Okay. So the next one's the OG chads of the game, the original players. The ones who've been playing since 2016 but just haven't found another game to play. See, this is a bit difficult because it's a bit of a grey area for a lot of these topics. But in particular, this one, some of these players are a little bit like... Stuck in the whole nostalgic, oh, I wish the game was still like it was in 2016. No, you don't. The game was terrible back then. The game was honestly just a really un... If you think it's unbalanced now, Jesus Christ, you should have seen it back then. It was ridiculous. But the ones who've stuck around since the dawn of time... I'm going to go middle ground. I can't really... They're not bad or good. Sometimes they're just a little bit burnt out. Sometimes they're just... Yeah. It's a bit of a difficult one, that one. Next one is the hook, which is kill yourself on hook virtually any situation so it might be something like i don't know they go into a game and they've got to select seven or eight killers they really despise and as soon as they get into the game as soon as they're down they get on hook they just insta kill themselves on hook that's really frustrating or another flip side of this is they'll just give up straight away purely because they've maybe looped them for one mind game area and then just lost the next one and they're not happy with that result same goes for some killers who just give up straight away I mean, you get it. Sometimes, I I've had games before I've gone into it as a killer and Undying and Devour has been insta-cleansed. It's frustrating, but I don't give up. Like, you chose those perks. It's your own problem. You deal with it. Next is the Bully Squad. This is, again, a grey area because you get some Bully Squads who are funny with it. You get some who are really really good at the game and will bring the absolute meta and i'm talking gen rush bully squad they're not trying to like bully you in a sense of sabotaging or flashlight saves or whatever you think is bullying i don't think any of that is but what i'm saying is that's what the usual bully squad is uh i'm talking about the ones who come with full meta come with the quickest possible gen perks and again it's not really bullying because you're just playing the game to win but you know what kind of squads I mean when, I, when I'm talking about these. They're going to go into C. I don't really mind them too much. That Sometimes uh, they can be quite frustrating to play against, but it is what it is. Next is holding the game hostage players. And that usually goes for killers. But it can go for survivors as well. Like, um, for instance, you could hold a game hostage as a survivor by hiding in a bush or hiding lockers and just slowly moving away around the map when the game's virtually over. Just get yourself killed and get yourself hooked or try and escape. Do something. Or if you're the killer and you just slug, even though the game's already won, you say you've killed everyone but two and you just slug and leave them on the ground and you're not, you're just, just leaving everyone on the ground all the time and letting them bleed out. That kind of stuff it just, just really pisses me off. I just don't understand why people do that shit. But again, it's a play style. It's not something what's like... No, you know what? It's going in D. I don't like it. It's, it's stupid. Okay, the next one is doing anything for content. Uh, and... Usually these are obviously content creators, but you get some who will fr throw entire games just purely for their own selfish reasons that they want to find some kind of content. Have I ever been guilty of this? Maybe at some point. Not in purposely throwing a game, but I've, I reckon I've um, got myself down by accident by trying to get something spicy off. But I'm talking about the the opposite end of the scale of these kind of people. These, these ones are the, are the ones who are literally doing this every game. And then if it doesn't go their way, they're not happy about it. So... 
we'll go we'll go see they're not really bad people they're just trying the best to find a clip for tiktok or something i don't fucking know okay the next one's a bit more a positive one these are the people who try and make the game a better place and this isn't always just content creators. You get some people who, um, I remember Ostarvis linked um, a clown who made a 200 page guide on how to be really good as a clown. They're trying to make the game better for other players. They're trying to make the, the game better for clown mains. Or for instance, people like uh, Scott Jund, he complains a lot, but he also comes up with solutions on how to make the game better. There's, there's different variations of this kind of person and it's not always just a content creator. It might even be people who make concepts for like killers and stuff and not just people on youtube people who if you look on reddit you can find entire concepts for killers what have not been released in the game yet or made up killers from scratch like these kind of people are awesome they keep the game fresh they try and improve the game not always gonna happen behavior not always gonna, always gonna listen to you but i just yeah they're s tier definitely 100 percent. next up is the toxic comp player now this isn't me saying all comp players are toxic at all well, there is some. I've been in games before against um, what I believe is a comp squad. Either that or they just put their entire name as a comp team of some sort. And then they've destroyed me. The better players than me. That's totally fine. But in the end game chat, they refer to you as dog, trash, all that kind of stuff. Even though you just said GG. These kind of people are just toxic and I don't like people like that. So they're going to go into C tier. Low C tier. Because they're good at the game, but I don't know. You kind of I, you lose all respect from someone like me if you if you're just a piece of shit at the end of in the end game chat because you've won. Surely winning is enough. If it's not, then fuck you, I guess. Next up is the wholesome comp player, and I've never ever really been into the whole comp scene at all. I would get fucking destroyed if I went into comp. I know I would. I'm not good enough for it at all. But recently, Hens did a, a tournament and it got a lot more people watching comp and I found myself watching, I think he's called V1 and I apologise if I'm getting the name wrong, but I remember watching his stream and he's a comp player and very welcoming in the chat and, and I asked questions about what was going on because I didn't understand the rules, there's like certain perks which aren't allowed and certain perks which are allowed and yeah, so there is decent comp players out there who aren't dickheads, but there is also, like anything in walks of life, you've got dickheads and non-dickheads. Same goes for comp. But for some reason, there's like a group of people who will be amazing at the game and just talk to you like a piece of shit in the end game chat after they've been you. You don't need to rub salt in the wound, you've already won. Okay, next one's a little bit more controversial because it's a very, very, very grey area and it is the tunneler. And... <laughs> I don't mean someone who just swaps pressure halfway through a game because they are going to lose. That is totally different. I mean someone who... How do I explain this? From the get-go, goes for probably the weakest link straight away. No, because that sounds that's wrong to say. It's going to be a really difficult one to explain. I more mean if someone is losing a game, like as, as in a group of survivors are absolutely getting destroyed, and they say even within the first five gens and they still just go for the same person and proxy. They're not actually playing the game at this point. They're literally just staying within close proximity of the hook. Going for the same person over and over again. Even after getting gifted hook trades, you're still not taking it. You're just gunning to get that one person out and give them like as minimum points as possible, like 500 points. Like we're not if we're not playing comp, you don't really need to do that unless the game is going out of your way quickly i know there's an argument to say is you're you're preventing that from that situation from happening but you know which kind of person i'm talking about you usually have a steam profile which says salt hunter or something like that and they've got about fucking 100 pages of negative comments and they thrive off it that's what i mean by a tunneler i don't mean someone who tunnels a player out of the game when it's necessary because it's totally necessary points there's a reason when to tunnel there's a reason not to tunnel and usually these players who I'm talking about will have a full build which is dedicated to not tunneling. Like they'll have things like pain res. Um, they'll have grim embrace. They'll have the works of someone who doesn't need to tunnel but still tunnels. I I'll never understand those kind of players. And then they'll just put GG and a smiley face in the end game chat. <laughs> Even though you, you know what kind of person I'm talking about. Next up is the meta enjoyer. 
This, again, is just a middle ground. I, if you want to play full meta, that's totally fine. You bought the game, you play how you want to play. But there's another grey area of this where you get people who will play... You'll get a full survivor team who will play full meta and a killer who's gone in with meme perks. The full meta team might lose. And then they'll be salty in endgame chat and because the meme build happened to beat them, they're against that player for some reason. Like, you get some really bizarre people in endgame chats. Same goes for killer. A killer could come in with full meta and get beaten by a boil over squad and then they're not happy about that. It's like, you can't have it always. Sometimes you lose. But a full meta player, middle ground doesn't, it's neither here nor there. It's one of them. You do what you want to do. Okay. Next up is the chill streamer. They're going to hate it. What I mean by a chill streamer is just someone who's welcoming. Like, I can give examples of people I've been watching recently. There's a um, Brain DVD. He's a great Survivor main. Uh, the Spooky Memes, another great streamer. People who are just like welcoming to the chat. Just decent, yeah, decent people who deserve a big audience. And hopefully their audiences will grow because they're two people I've watched recently. Coco Latte as well. And... The gaming athlete, that's a dredge and a singularity main, both very welcoming. You get you get some streamers who just as soon as you go into the chat, you'll talk to them, they'll talk back, even if you've got a big audience, and they'll just explain what's going on if you're new to DVD, whatever. Just decent, wholesome streamers. Nothing wrong with that at all. Well, that brings me on to my next type of streamer, which is the entitled knobhead streamer. And sometimes you get these people where you will go into the game afterwards and say GG, and they're like, oh, you're a stream sniper. It's like You've got TTV in your name. Like, what are you expecting? Like, people are going to come into your chat. And do you know what? If you are a stream sniper, fair play to you, because there's no way in fucking hell I could play DBD whilst looking at another monitor, figuring out where the other stream, where the streamer is, with a, probably a two second delay on where they are, and still managing to win a game. Like, these streamers, <laughs> God, they really piss me off sometimes. Like, take TTV out of your name if you don't. If you don't want people to uh, come into your chat in the endgame chat, because that sometimes happens. Obviously, there is cases of people like harassing people for no reason. They're dickheads in their own world. But I'm talking about, yeah, just the entitled, annoying TTV is the ones who will always expect Hatch as well for some reason, or expect people to play nice. You get a few of them, and yeah, they go, they go and see, whatever. Okay. Next up is map offering bringers. <laughs> I don't like map offering bringers at all. They're not they're not bad people usually, but a map offering can really, really, really change the outcome of a game. It's one of the most I want so I don't I don't want to say overpowered, but one of the strongest things you can bring to the table as a survivor or killer is a map offering. You really can. So yeah. The gen jockeys. These people can't loop very well, but they they always do the gens, and they just sit on them all the time. Hate it. Why not? I mean, there's nothing wrong if that's the part of the game you enjoy. Who am I to say? Um, the AFKers. They're going to <laughs> made this list, and then some of these areas are so difficult. Obviously, there's. It's so like the moments where, I don't know, you need the toilet or something, but you get some people who might go and make a rotisserie chicken when they're in the lobby or something, and then they'll be AFK for the first 10 minutes of the game, and then a killer might hook them, and they're upset because a killer hooked them. It's like, what, what were you expecting? You went into a game where the killer's job is to kill you, and you just stood there like a free piece of meat. Of course they're going to hook you or down you. I usually down those players and just leave them on the ground, and then hopefully someone picks them up and it continues the game a bit, but... An AFK -er, what I'm talking about, the bad ones, are the ones who will press ready up. The queue times are usually a couple of minutes, and then they'll go and fuck up and make a full roast dinner. Like, what the hell? Okay, next up is Stretch Res Enjoyer. Stretch Res Millionaire. Uh, again, the example I'm talking about really is the one where you can literally see other loops with it, where it kind of is bullshit. And do I think it's cheating? Or was cheating? Because I don't think you can really do it anymore because you get these like black bars if you try and stretch as. I kind of do. Yeah. I mean, if you've got certain loops, what you're not meant to see over, but you can see over with a certain angle or certain resolution on your screen, 
yeah, that's kind of bullshit. You shouldn't be able to do that. It's not fair. There's a difference between being really good at check spots and being able to see over the check spots. Like, the old school stretch res players were the worst because the mind games didn't exist against them on certain tiles where they should exist. Like, 50-50s became 100% for them, and... I am glad that black bars exist. And if you say the game looks better in stretch resolution, you're fucking lying. There's no way. There's no way. I I'm talking about the, the serious example. I, I use filters. Don't get me wrong. I think filters... Again, there's a grey area where people make their screen near enough grey and then anything red will be ultra bright red. I don't think that's the same as being able to see over a wall. I think filters at overall are fine. Do I think it looks better if the screen's near enough grey and then the redis is red or red? Not really, no, but I don't think it's the same example of uh, cheating as this. I don't I don't think it's cheating to be honest with filters in general. Okay, let's move along to the next one, because that's that's a weird subject to go over. The Great Escape. This is the kind of player, I am sometimes guilty of this, who will um, give themselves to let others escape. I do because I just find it fun and I like the risk of possibly myself getting out as well. These kind of people will kill themselves so others can get out. They're cool. Um, I don't do it all the time, obviously. Like, sometimes I want to get out myself and don't really see an option to get someone else out. But I do find that fun. I think that's a very fun... Like, Endgame can be really fun as a survivor. That's one of the funnest moments. <laughs> okay, so next up we have... <clears throat> the Rulebook Enjoyer. They are going to go into low C. This, again, it'll go back over things like tunneling. There's there's certain survivors and killers who expect you to play a certain way. You can play however you want, minus cheating, exploiting, and being a dick in the endgame chat, in my opinion. But obviously, people are people, and that's the way they are. But the rulebook enjoyer is a lot of bullshit. You, sh you don't have to play any way you want. Uh, you don't have to play any way that other people want you to. You play how you want to. Again, it's got, like some of the things I'm saying are kind of overlapping because I'm saying you shouldn't tunnel. There's there's different variations of tunneling. Next up is the 10,000 hour player who still dog shit the game. <laughs> I'm guilty of this in certain ways, especially in Survivor. Um, I don't have 10,000 hours though, but these kind of people are funny. <laughs> Usually they openly admit it as well, and I, I, I don't know, it just makes me laugh, stuff like that. Anyway, that was the tier list. I've, the tier list is open to the public, so if you want to use any of these stupid images, you're more than welcome to, but they won't make sense to a lot of people. And I will be doing a video shortly on this channel with this bat. Um, basically, it's going to go into a lookalike lake, which I've designed from resin and polystyrene and various paints and stuff and rock. So that's why this is here. And... I've not just randomly cosplayed. I, I had this jacket anyway, and I thought it'd be just fun to do. And who's better to judge people than Negan? If you don't know who Negan is, he's off The Walking Dead. Anyway, like, subscribe, and other YouTube things. Take care. And I was never going to do an American accent. It wasn't happening. It's never going to happen.